Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about an induction motor parameter estimation problem. This is our example number two and again in this example we'll do the calculations for the circuit parameters of an induction motor. So let's look at our problem. We have a three-phase Y-connected induction motor having these values so 30 kilo volts amperes as a apparent power 2.2 kilowatts and 50 hertz operating frequency and this data is given from the measurements and we have done the DC tests, no load test, the block rotor test for this motor. And to minimize the errors due to skin effect and all the magnetic field saturation, the block rotor test is done at a low frequency which is then 25% of the operating frequency and this is according to the IEEE recommendation. So for 50 Hz we go down to 12.5 Hz. Now we want to calculate using this data is the equivalent circuit parameters for this induction motor and we would like to have a drawing of this equivalent circuit and we assume that the design is according to the NEMA design B. Alright, let's look at our solutions. Now for DC test, looking to the DC test, we can see that we can calculate the DC resistance related to the DC test. Now using this equivalent circuit, which will be then used to calculate the RS. Now in more detail, you can see actually between these two nodes, you apply your voltage, which is then DC voltage, and the result is the DC current here. And then what you see is that you have three resistors, but in this case we have two resistors in series. So the R the DC voltage and also DC current will result in the DC resistance just using ohms low, 5.6 ohms, but the actual resistance of the stator will be then 50% of that one, so divided by 2, so 2.8. That's very important because looking at this in great detail you can see that this is not 5.6 but 2.8 ohms. So that's then for the stator per phase. Now we have done one of the components calculated of our equivalent circuit. Now moving on to the next one, which is then the no load test. And this is then designated by Z sub NL. That's the impedance seen by the source voltage for no load test. And that is of course again our phase voltage. Now this is the equivalent circuit reduced from a general equivalent circuit to this one specifically for no load test. Now we know from the measurement that we have this result because we have now for the phase voltage, which is then line volts across uh, divided by the square root of three over the phase voltage for no load condition. The, the information is shown here. So it is 2200 over the square root of three divided by the 4.5 amperes, which is then the phase current for the stator. Then we get, if you do the math here, you will get 282.3 ohms. Okay, we can of course convert this in a general expression to the summation of two elements, which is then the, react the resistor of the no load part and also the reactance of the no load part and also make give the magnitude of that impedance. All right, now we have of course the information about the power and then this is now the total power drawn by the stator. So it means actually the total power of the three phase system. So in order to go to the per phase system, so, so one phase, we need to divide this power by three. So we have 1600 watts. So we need to divide by three and you need to then take the exact same phase current. And you can now calculate the related resistance at no load condition. Now then, since we have the impedance and also now the resistance, for this no load condition, we can calculate the reactance for this case just using this formula in a different form. So then we have 281 ohms. Now we know, of course, in this condition, in no load condition, that this, these two reactances or inductors are in series. So we can say X of S and X of M will be together 281 ohms. But we don't know yet what they are in, in unique form, so we don't have separate Values so for need for that we need another information that will be given then by block rotor test. So moving on to the block rotor test, and again in the block rotor test we have another impedance which is associated with the block rotor ZBR, and again we have the source voltage, and this is the circuit we will use. And you can see now the 
the load is shorted. So that's the characteristic of a block rotor test. Now from the measurement results from this last column, we can see again the phase voltage. I mean, this is the line, line voltage, of course, and also the phase current and also the power drawing for, per, uh, by the stator in total. So again, first going to the impedance by this block rotor test, divide by this phase voltage we require. So we divide the line voltage by square root of three and we have then 6.24 ohms for this situation. Now, we can of course also use the expression later on to calculate the specific values. So again here, we have then the RBR is the resistance at block rotor test and also the reactance of this at block rotor condition. Now again, we go to the specific value of the resistor at block rotor by using the power drawing for this condition. And again, we divide by three since this is total and we want to of course set up a equivalent circuit per phase or for one phase. So we divide the power drawn by three and we use the current given. So we get 4.8 ohms. Now we have now calculated this and we know from the DC test that the RS is already calculated. And you can see these two resistors RS and also the RR prime will be in this situation in series. So what you have calculated here will be actually the summation of these two resistor values. So I can say then R, R prime is then the block rotor resistance minus the RS we have determined from the DC tests. So we have the 4.8 ohms here and we had 2.8 ohms in the DC tests. So we get two ohms for the R, R prime. And that is then this result. Now, moving on to the XPR, which is then the reactance of this block rotor test. Now, using the values we have just calculated, you get 3.98 ohms. Now, since the block rotor test was carried out at a lower frequency, what was 12.5 Hertz, we need to frequency scale this such that we get the normal operating frequency of 50 Hertz. So that means we have to go from 12.5 to 50. And since the reactance of the inductor will scale linearly with the frequency, we need to make this actually this of conversion, which is then multiplication of this value by four. Then we will get 15.92 ohms. And then we will use this value in this table to determine the required value for the parameters for the specific situation of uh, design type B. Now, using the design table here for the NEMA and our specific for type B, we have the following situation, 0.4 times this value will give you X of S and 0.6 times this value for XBR will give you the XR prime. So that these are the results. So now we have sufficient information to calculate all the final parameter, which is XM. XM is in the no load test, including with the XS, actually given already as 281 ohms that's already calculated so we know now xs now we can calculate the xm so from this data and also from the data of the no load test we can move on to xm and that is then actually shown here so we have 274.6 ohms now in summary we have done this result for our equivalent circuit of this induction motor so we have now five components and that is the value in this situation again this represents the road load of this system so we have in total five parameters rs r r prime xs xr prime and also xm and now we have all the results here and that concludes this example if you have any questions or suggestions about this please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible thanks again and see you next time